Hey everybody, welcome back to Live Life Simple. Today I'm gonna to go over the flated topper. This is an inflatable camper shell or topper. It'll fit on compact trucks and full-size trucks. It folds down into a small carrying bag and you can inflate it again within a matter of minutes and put it onto your truck. We're gonna really put it through its paces today. I'm gonna to do a durability test. I'm gonna do a road test. And we're gonna talk about all the pros and cons of this inflatable topper from Flated. We're gonna do all of that coming up. So I have a lot of questions when it comes to this flated topper. First, is it durable enough to uh, withstand weather, sun, rain? Second, can it withstand highway speeds? Because if you have something that's just flopping around when you're going 65 or 75 miles an hour, it's not really gonna do you much good protecting your cargo inside. And going along with that, I wanna know if it's waterproof because that kinda doesn't help you either if it leaks water into your cargo. And the last thing I wanna cover is what everyone is wondering about, really the weak spot of this topper is what if this gets a hole in it? Can it be repaired? Can it actually last longer than just a few months or until you get a hole in it? So here's what's in the box so far. This is pretty cool. It comes in a carrying pack. I don't know how useful it'll be, but at least for storage, it'll be great. You can see these little ports right here. They're all over the topper. Those are individual uh, air chambers, which is kind of nice because if you do ever get a puncture, you can kind of isolate uh, where it's at. The rest of it'll stay inflated. And to get this thing blown up, all we need to do is twist this little cap here, make sure that this valve is pulled out. Use the, uh, the included pump. It just twists on there and start pumping. So each of these sides is only taking about a minute or two to pump up. So not too bad. They actually just need to go up to eight PSI. There's actually a little gauge on the pump that tells you what the PSI is so you know when to stop. All right, got the last side. I would uh, recommend that you pump this upside down just like I am right now probably don't want to put it directly onto the concrete. I'm using just a little piece of carpet. The stuff is tough, but it's not bulletproof and it will get scraped up and not look as good. And another cool thing, because this is like all inflatable technology, you see these in paddle boards and rafts and all kinds of stuff. The pumps are universal as well. You can actually get one that just plugs into a cigarette lighter. And this one, you can actually set the PSI so we can go down to eight, which is where we want to be. And it'll just automatically turn off. If you're interested in one of these, you can find the link to this down in the description of this video, as well as my affiliate link for flated toppers. Uh, if you purchase through that, it greatly helps this little YouTube channel. All right, we're all done. It's time to put this thing on the truck. All right, so let's see if this is a one person or a two person job. There are some nice grab handles as well as some D rings on top of here. Really, the weight's not too bad. I would guess maybe 35 pounds, something like that. Definitely a one person job. This is going on a 2023 F-150. It's a short box, which means this will work on a Toyota Tundra, a Chevy Silverado, uh, anything with that short box. And the nice thing about this being so lightweight and that it's inflatable is that if you don't want it on your truck all the time, you can just deflate it, put it in the bag, and put it away until you're ready to use it. So here's what's left in the bag. I would imagine these are the windows, which we'll install after we get the topper fastened down to the truck. There's also an orange container. This is your patch kit. That's something that you hope we will never need, but we'll talk about that a little bit later in the video. So installation is pretty straightforward. You just go through this D-ring and then down through your ring that's in your truck bed, back up through here. You're gonna pull it through here and then cinch it down. You're gonna do that on all four corners and then you're gonna do a similar thing in the center. You're gonna go through this D-ring. You're gonna put your J-hook so it'll slide under the bed rail and then tighten those down at the center. Once you have these things tightened down, I would push the ratchet up to the top, leave some slack and just cut off the extra of this. If you take a lighter and just burn 
the end of it real quick. It'll keep it from fraying in the future. Leave yourself a little bit of slack just in case you need it for whatever reason. Well, definitely the easiest topper that I've ever put on. Before we go any further, I wanna show you a couple things that I've noticed. Uh, they do have some incorporated pockets, which are kinda cool. They're not super big, but you could stick a cell phone or something in here if you're camping in here, um, or if you want stuff not to slide around. Um, these are screens right here, and they're just uh, a Velcro. So if you were camping in here, you could get some airflow while keeping the bugs out. And then on top, there's some other D-rings. Grab handles. Well, now that we have the topper on, it's time to put the windows on. One tip that I can give you is if you have a nice sunny day, let these um, sit in the sun, get heated up for a while. It'll make your life a lot easier. Unfortunately, my weather's pretty overcast today, so I'm just gonna let these sit unrolled for a while. The material they use for these windows is very similar to the vinyl that's used for boats and uh, just different recreational vehicles and things. Uh, the downside of this is they will get foggy over time if you don't keep them clean. They can also scratch very easy, so I would definitely keep them off the concrete. And I realized as I unrolled these that this should have gone on before I installed the topper because this actually goes in between the cab of the truck and the topper. But because this goes together so easy, this shouldn't take me more than a couple minutes. I'm gonna do that right now. All right, let's get one of these side windows in. I'm imagining that over time, this will get easier because the plastic and everything will get more pliable. So it'd also be easier if you had two people. And this is the newest generation. This newest generation does have a rain flap on it. The old ones, I believe, did not. That's a huge upgrade. It's gonna help with uh, keeping snow out, keeping rain out. The back window is gonna be a little trickier. I would leave your straps a little bit loose on the back until you get this into its place and then once you do it has zippers. This is probably a two person job just so you can get it on straight the first time and get the straps tightened down. Once it's on and uh, affixed to the topper and to the proper size of your truck, it should be really easy even if you take it on and off a couple times afterwards. All right, we're down to the last part of the install and this last part is gonna be this strap. One side has Velcro on it which is going to attach to the bottom of the topper, which is gonna help keep rain out. This is something that was not on the last version of the Flated. This model has only been out for a few days now. This version is a big improvement over the last because there was none of this on the last one. It is still a little hokey, I think. I think it could use some improvement. I'm sure the company is aware of that, but it is gonna at least keep the rain out this time. I have a feeling that thing's probably gonna need adjusted every five or 10 times you undo this Velcro. Just because I think it's gonna wanna move around every time you do this and it's gonna loosen up that Velcro. All right, there it is, all installed. I think after this initial time of putting it together, it's only gonna take you probably three to five minutes to take this thing on and off. The windows are also tinted, so you can't really see through them. So on the sides, there's these little pockets with straps. Also on the back that allow you to hold up this back window. And now I wanna see how durable this is. I'm gonna start doing that by getting on top of this thing. Well, it supported 165 pounds. Let's see uh, if we can throw a kayak and a couple paddle boards up there. This is definitely not a light kayak. and it handled it totally fine. I did put a piece of carpet up here because this stuff is pretty tough, but it's definitely not indestructible. That's three paddle boards and a heavy kayak. I would guess it's probably 130, 140 pounds. It didn't seem to even squat it at all. I think you'd be fine putting a couple kayaks on top of this. It's actually a lot stronger than I was anticipating. I would make sure that everything is fully inflated to the eight PSI. And then with those D rings, you should be able to cinch some stuff down. So uh, it should be a pretty secure cargo. So while we're talking about durability, I want to mention what this stuff is actually made of. They've been using the same technology on paddle boards. They use it on uh, the big inflatable rafts that do whitewater rafting. This stuff has uh, been around for a long time and has really been shown to be able to take abuse like rocks, like weather, constant exposure to sun. Whether or not that will pertain to this topper over time, that's just to be said still. When you're exposing it to things on the road, like magnesium chloride or salt used on the road, 
or rain, hail, things like that. I think it will probably do just fine, but if you do ever get a puncture, one nice thing is that each of these sides is its own compartment, so it won't just deflate the whole thing. That's actually a new thing on this generation. If you do ever get a puncture, basically, you just cut a piece to the size you need and use this glue, and within 24 hours, you have a, a repaired topper again. So for durability, we've checked my weight, we have checked cargo weight and cargo tie down. I think what we really need to do is put it in a real world scenario and uh, drive it on the interstate, see how it handles. We're ready for our test drive and while I was doing this, I thought about visibility, which was another concern of mine. I actually drove this for about 45 or 50 miles yesterday and the visibility surprisingly is good. I can see just fine out the back window. You can see I have a bike rack on. Uh, you can see that the side windows are not really great, but they're not really great on any topper. And even this clear window right here that's in between the topper and the cab uh, is really clear. Whether or not that will deteriorate over time, we'll just have to see, but let's go on our test drive. All right, well, we're out on a country road. We're going 55 right now. I'm gonna take it up to 65. One thing that I have noticed since I have been driving this for 45 or 50 miles already, I have not noticed any difference in wind noise no extra flapping or weird noises or wind drag or anything like that. So that's been really awesome. I'm actually very surprised that that is the case. I thought you would hear at least a little bit of a difference. There's really little to no movement in the topper at all. It's very rigid. Next, I wanna put this thing through a weather test and it's actually perfect timing. If you look behind me, it looks like it's about ready to downpour. So I'm gonna let this sit out in the rain for several hours and see if we can find any leaks. All right, well, that was a pretty good storm. Rain for about an hour and a half. And assuming that I got this all installed correctly, hopefully it will be free of moisture. Everything is dry all the way around. So I have noticed a couple of weak spots, I guess, if you want to call them that. But I, I do think it's probably going to be the case with, with all toppers. Uh, right in the corners in the front. And this could just be an F-150 thing also. But you can see daylight through there. There is a gap all along the whole front up here. Um, just because the rails of the bed sit up higher than the front of the truck bed. So with a little bit of adhesive foam, maybe some thicker stuff similar to this, that you could seal it up and make it watertight. But I think at a minimum, you would want to put some right in here uh, just to keep blowing snow and blowing rain completely out of there and that would keep your truck bed dry. Okay, well we've put the flated through its paces today. Uh, I wanna give you my final thoughts, kind of pros and cons of what I think of this flated topper. My first and most obvious con is this tailgate. We kind of talked about it earlier. While I do think that it's a big improvement where there's actually a rain guard to keep stuff out, I just do think that this is gonna, this is gonna be a constant issue. Every time you open this, you're gonna have to readjust this strap. If you could make it so it stayed on here permanently, that would actually help quite a bit. Uh, other than that, I think it's, uh, it's, uh, it's definitely a big improvement, but there is also room for improvement. My first pro is these windows actually do a great job of keeping water out, keeping moisture out. I like the ability to be able to just pull them off really quick if you want to. If you just want to have screens, you can also do the same with the screens. So if you don't want the screens in there, you can take the screens completely out. Obviously a huge pro to this topper is just its totability and its portability uh, that you can take it down, deflate it, put it on a shelf for six months if you want to, and then six months later, blow it back up again, put it on by yourself, which is just really unheard of in the world of camper shells and toppers. This next one's kind of a pro and a con, and that is that it's made out of vinyl. Uh, the pro to it is that you can easily repair it 
uh, really in a matter of minutes, just with a little patch kit. It's pretty much silicone and you cut to the size of whatever you need to patch. The downside to that is the same thing really is that it's vulnerable to punctures, it's vulnerable to just weather, sun, all that kind of stuff and time will tell of how long these things will actually last the life expectancy of this topper in comparison to a fiberglass or aluminum topper. My next one is also a pro and a con uh, and that is the look of this thing. I'm not sure that I'm super sold on the look. It's a little bit of an eyesore. I think it looks a little bit better just because it matches the gray of my truck, but if you had a different color truck, I think it would kind of stand out like a sore thumb. So with that look, you have the taller height, like a camper shell, but that also kind of makes it hideous looking, I think. That height does actually give you a lot of nice headroom that a smaller topper would not. And it's kind of square in the back, which is interesting. I think it would also give you a lot of uh, access to be able to move things if you're hauling things in here, bikes, plywood, whatever. It gives you a little extra room to maneuver things. Last pro I wanna talk about is the durability. It's actually a very solid finished product when it's blown up. This technology has been proven to really take a beating and uh, really last a long time for what it is. And that kind of leads into the cost. Right now, as of this recording, these are $1,800. That's quite a bit less than a fiberglass topper. Depending on what you're gonna use it for, that may or may not be a pro or a con for you. So overall, I'm really excited about this thing. I really wanna put it through its paces. I'll keep you posted as the months go by, even over the winter. This seems to be a pretty good value for what it is. And I'm sure we'll put this through lots of adventures. In the meantime, remember to live life simple. We'll catch you next week.